Welcome to the One Question Leadership Podcast. This is Richard Duran, Athletic Director at the University of the Incarnate Word. The leadership development program at the NCAA allowed me to not only fine tune my skills, but prepare me to take the AD chair. My time in the Pathways program not only allowed me to connect with true professionals throughout the industry, but also learn real life lessons on how to apply my skills and serve our student athletes to the best of my ability. Leadership development is a crucial aspect of the NCAA to produce the future leaders within the organization. Always do the right things for the right reasons and enjoy the episode. Greetings, this is Ty Brown and welcome to the One Question Leadership Podcast where we highlight executives and organizational leadership. Be sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at One Q Leadership. Our guest today is Heath Schroyer. Heath is a director of athletics at McNeese State. Greetings, Heath. Thanks for joining us. Good to see you, Ty. Thanks for having me. Glad to have you on, Heath. Now, you coached basketball for 26 years, right? <laughs> I did. 24 in Division One and 12 as a head coach. Yep, which is which is crazy. 12 years as a head coach is a wealth of experience for yeah. someone to have. 26 years in a profession is like you, you've learned a lot, developed a lot, probably had a lot of influence on the student-athletes that you coached. Uh, now, you've been there at McNeese. This is your third year going on. Going into my fourth. Fourth year. But um, – was a coach there for a couple of years couple and now years. moving into an AD. And then overlapped for a little overlapped bit now for moving a year, into yes. being an athletic mm-hmm. director, which is an interesting experience in itself. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Um, one thing about your experience that I, that, I, that I know about is that you became the AD while you were a basketball coach, but it was specifically during the pandemic, and it was while there were some hurricanes that just happened, and you're like you're trying to figure out how to come – out of these things that are happening as a university and specifically as an athletics department, right? And most people who take positions, you don't want to take a job if there's no problem to solve. And it sounded like there were some major problems to solve when you <laughs> For sure. took over the job at there at McNeese in terms of taking on the athletic director position. So talk to me a little bit about evaluating that whole situation when you were asked to serve as athletic director while you were a basketball coach. Well, um, you know, it was obviously right at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, the the ad that hired me retired uh they did a search search uh didn't go very well president brought me in uh asked me to do both step in obviously everyone's in a pandemic budgets are getting cut all those things um so i did and and i was doing both Mm -hmm. um and then august comes of 2020 and we get hit with two massive hurricanes um it was actually on the front page of sports illustrated um Ross um, Dellinger put an article out, you know, obviously a couple of years ago. So it was, uh, it was the hardest time um, I've, as a human being, as a man, I've ever been been because it's, you know, you don't have water, electricity, power for 18 days. Um, our every facility on on campus just got crushed, and you have 400 student athletes, and you have coaches, and assistant coaches, and administration. Um, getting them all safe, getting them all situated. Um, it was um, the most trying experience of my career. But one I look back on, Ty, and honestly, it was, uh, I learned so much. Um, you know, sitting in with the governor, sitting in with FEMA representatives, sitting in with obviously our president and, and our and the senior cabinet, uh, state senators, um, the highest um, of you know, elected officials there really is at our level. And um, it was, I learned a lot and, um, but I sure hope we don't go through it again. <laughs> yeah, right. Which is interesting, right? Now, one thing I know about you, we've had a conversation over on Athletic Director You mm-hmm. about your process as a coach, process as an athletic director in terms of assessing a situation, right? Um, prioritize what you need to prioritize in terms of that situation, create a plan and then implement and execute that plan. So tell me about that aspect of, you know, Facilities are ruined. Our student athletes are, are misplaced. Students on campus are misplaced. I mean, we probably need to bring some money in to fix things, but do we have money? We're getting emergency money, but that doesn't go to athletics first. So, I mean, tell me about the process of assessing that and then prioritizing what's important first. Well, it, it's, it's a great question. The first thing that I assessed was everyone was beat up. Okay. Um, everyone uh, took a hit. Um, homes were damaged, the community, everything. So, Number one, I thought was, how can I bring some positivity to this situation? Um, The university obviously needed a positive voice and a positive vision. This community needed one. And 
the first thing I knew is that we needed to be, be that. And athletics needed to be something that this community could rally around. Um, so my number one, number one objective was to make sure everyone was safe. Um, and the ones that were in town, that they had all the water they could have, they had non-perishable items that could, we could survive, right? And check on all them. Um, and then at that point it was, okay, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna have a vision and we're and our objective is we're gonna play every sport for the year. Wow. Now, I'd be lying if I didn't say I had no idea how I was gonna do that. <laughs> but this is what we're gonna do. But we're gonna do this. Yeah. You know, we're, we're not gonna lay down. Um, so right away, now football got moved to the spring because of COVID, so that bought us a little time. Um, we put basketballs, one of them in Lafayette, one of them in Baton Rouge. Um, you know, the it, it was it was really hard, but we but that was the number one objective was to be safe, and then we're going to figure out how to play and to get our playing surfaces or getting our our ability to play at home solidified. Whether that meant our basketball team playing at an old Burton Coliseum, which is a cow barn, which is what we did, um, you know, football playing at noon not because we don't have lights, you know, baseball playing at noon, like all those things. Um, and then obviously that was the goal. And then, you know, we obviously prioritized and the first sports coming up were the basketballs because of COVID. So we wanted to prioritize that. And that was then we obviously set a plan in place and uh, and then my staff we just executed it um but i think the biggest thing for me was this community and this university and all of our student athletes and coaches needed something to believe in that we were going to be okay you know that and i would tell them that you know what this is a very very unfortunate blessing and when we get through this we're going to be stronger we're going to be more united and we're our facilities are going to be better and we're going to be better for it because we're never People live in an entitled world. And what this hurricane taught us is that it can all be gone in a day, in a moment. Um, and it has. It's made us stronger. It's made us more committed. It made us more uh, tougher, more appreciative. Um, and uh, I'm proud to say that we we did play all those sports um, that year. And our home games were at home, it was right. the best home we could find. <laughs> so, so what's interesting about that, right? Because, you know, you go back to assess prioritize, create a plan, and execute their plan. And that one specifically was the first plan was to make sure everybody had their natural, the resources they needed to live, right? Amen. Second, now let's figure out how we can actually execute our sports that we want to execute, however we're going to do it, right? So you executed that plan. What was next? I mean, where do you go from, okay, now we're playing sports, right? I mean, I, I imagine there's a, an aspect of looking at the facility, like these things are really messed up here, guys, and we got to oh, rebuild everything. Like, tell me what was next after that? What was the next priority, I guess? Well, I, then the, the next priority was the two was was obviously fixing um, our basketball arena. Um, so facilities our, came. Our facilities came yeah. next. Um, after that, it was all about the facilities and and, and honestly creating a mindset within our coaches that – we can't be woe as us. Um, you know, we, I mean, it, it was old saying, but we're not going to lay down. Um, you know, we, we got to find a way and um, we have to work together. I think the one thing that it taught us was, you know what, if, if soccer needed to use the football field or vice versa, we have to help each other. We can't sit there and say, well, I, I have my pride. Like we all had to work together, right? Um, you know, it couldn't be you know, the battle between men's basketball and women's basketball and practice times. Like I squashed all that stuff. Like we, we don't have time for all that. Like we have to work together. Um, so that was the, the next priority. And then obviously, you know, dealing with insurance, dealing with the state, dealing with FEMA. Um, I'd love to say that it's over. It's not over. We're right. still dealing still with dealing it. Still dealing with it. Huh? But, um, but our basketball facility is done. Um, our press box is not, but we're able to get light. So now we're playing um, at night again, um, our baseball field, we we're able to play, we we're able to play in the, at night again with, um, so, you know, our softball field got damaged. That's up and running again. So we've, we've clipped along here day by day. Make um, it happen, yeah. and I wanted to create a sense of, of normalcy the best I could, you know, it's, um, and I, I said that to our, to our staff was that, these kids that come back, they're not coming back to the same facilities they had. Um, but they need to come back to the same energy and the same commitment 
and for them to understand that they're helping this university and this city grow and become better and rebuild. And it's, uh, I, you know, I met with all the student athletes and I told them, this is a, this is something you'll never forget. This is a powerful moment in your lives that you can always look back and say, you know what? I was part of the true rebuild of, of an athletic department, of a team, um, and of a city. And, uh, I think that really helped rally everybody. But again, it goes back to being able to have a vision and communicate it and get people to understand that they're, you know, they're every role. I mean, from the managers to the people who, you know, mow the grass to everything, it all mattered. I, and it, I go back, it all comes back to me so quickly now, but like getting the grass mowed because that's normal, right? Like we just can't sit there and say, well, we have a hurricane, so we're not going to mow the grass for two months. Right. We got to mow the grass, you know, and just the little things that, that we could try to do to get our student athletes and our coaches and our support staff to go, okay, we're, we're going to be okay. Yeah. What, what I, what I find interesting and maybe I'd have to talk to your staff about it, but, but you come in right at the beginning of the pandemic. Right. <laughs> right. And you know, you're, you're pulled in two different directions, basketball and athletic sure. director, and there's a pandemic and you know what I mean? And, oh yeah. And at some point you give up the basketball thing and, and just stick with being a leading the department. But there's this aspect of, of leading people through turmoil. Right. And the reason why I say I would have to ask your staff, but it's like, are you, are you a believer now in, in the Schroyer way? I mean, like, because he's come in and he's had to lead us through this and you could have easily been like, I'm going to just coach basketball. For you sure. Oh, th th hey, there's no doubt. Yeah. There's no doubt. Um, and I'd be lying if I, if that moment didn't cross my mind right. once or twice, like, you know, it'd be a lot easier just worrying about these 15 basketball exactly. players. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm a man of faith. Um, I believe that I was put there for a reason and I truly believe I was put there for that moment. Okay. And that sounds big and bold, but, um, I really do believe that. I believe that I was put there for a mo for this moment to take this department through that and, and, uh, and into the future. And, um, everything happens for a reason. I had a lot of sleepless nights, um, because I was worried about all the kids, you know, where they're at. And it was, you know, you had a soccer team that was displaced. You had, I mean, just, you know, uh, and, and then, you know, trying to do it all during a pandemic and social distancing and all, I mean, it just was so it's hard, lot, right? but, um, but it was the most rewarding experience ever. And I've told people that, um, I haven't sat in a chair very long, but when you go through a situation like that, it's almost like a dog year. Yeah. Right. Like, I mean, it's it <laughs> like really the, the president's right. They're going with the black hair and they come out all gray hair and grizzled. Amen. Out <laughs> For sure. I mean, like, you know, people can go their whole I tell people go the whole careers and not deal with something as traumatic as that. And I dealt with it in my first, you know, year or so. Like it was just um, pandemic and, and hurricane. For right? sure. But I'll tell you this, though, it, it taught me a lot. And um, but it was moments where I said, you know, they're all looking to somebody. Yeah. You know, and I'm going to be that person. We're going to get through this and we're going to be better. McNeese is not going to lay down. We're not just going to cave in and say, hey, we can't play. We're, we're going to play. Yeah. Be, Joe Castiglione, Oklahoma always says, be, be someone people want to follow, right? Mm -hmm. And I've heard you say in the past, you got to give people something to follow, right? <laughs> give For them sure. a plan, right? Create yeah. a plan so they can follow the plan, right? I think that's excellent. You look at where we are now, right? We're summer of 2022, going into a new academic year here, or coming out of an academic year, going into an academic year. And you mentioned before, you're, you're still dealing with things that, that come from the hurricane and the aftermath of the hurricane, whether it be insurance, FEMA, you're a fundraiser. So, so tell me about how that ties into the story of McNeese State Athletics. Well, the hurricane was a very, 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 very unfortunate blessing in yeah. a sense, because it, it's like I told all of our donors, it allows us to make the changes that we really ultimately want to make and need to make, whether that's the new press box, um, being able to put a weight room in the legacy center for men's and women's basketball and volleyball, um, you know, being able to, to again, say, okay, we have the building back, but this is what we really need. And here's why. You know, we got everyone in one weight room still. Like, we need a different weight room on campus, and people could get behind that. Um, you know, the press box, like, okay, well, insurance is going to give us 
18 to 20 million. But you know what? If we get five more million, we can have this. So my goal with the press box is not, and same thing with the weight room and the, and the legacy center isn't, hey, well, this is really nice today. My goal is saying, hey, and I've sold, I've, I've talked about this to our donors is we want this 20 years from now to walk in and people go, man, this is really nice. Mm -hmm. So this is our chance. Th this is our opportunity. You know, God forbid another hurricane hits us again like that, but this is our chance. And if we want to do something special through great adversity, always there's a great blessing at the end. Um, I really believe that. And we went through it. We're still going through it, but we we're, we have an opportunity to, to make our university and our department bigger and stronger than it than, than, than it's, it's ever, ever been. been yeah. Mm -hmm. I wonder about the the stories that the student athletes tell, right? Because I know they have. Well, a being a student athlete is a story in itself, right? It's hard. B wherever background you came from is a story in itself. C you're going through a pandemic, which is a story in itself. And then D we're going through this hurricane where we don't have a facility that might not have a dorm or might not have an apartment, and we got to figure out where we're going from the future. So so I wonder about the insight you've received from student athletes as you continue on this journey there at McNeese State? It's a great question. Um, Ty, I, I'll tell you that, um, and I told our coaches this, no, none of these student athletes signed up for this. Mm -hmm. uh, like our basketball team, everyone signed up to be in the Legacy Center. They didn't sign up to, to be displaced and be in Lafayette for two months and not have a first month of practice. I mean, we didn't, weren't able to practice because we had nowhere to go. You know, right. so you're a month behind. You can't ever catch up. They didn't sign up for that. Um, so there's a fine line of, you know, loving them because they stuck with you, but also pushing them because, hey, you know what? At the end of the day, there's still a scoreboard. Yeah. And this is life and things are going to happen, but you, you got to figure out how to win. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but our student athletes, I think, really, really came together. Um, the thing I'm the most proud of is that we had kids coming back into town to go tarp roofs, to go help people move furniture, to feed people, to hand out water, um, especially the ones local in Louisiana and Texas. I mean, they would come over and just and just go in the community and just help. I mean, can't ever really describe it in a sense where you go 18 days without electricity, without water. You wake up every day with a different mindset <laughs> and it, it's, how do I find water? How do I find gas for a generator? How do I keep the refrigerator on so my food doesn't spoil? Because the grocery stores are closed because there's, I mean, there's not, I mean, it just was a war zone. Yeah. Um, but seeing our student athletes come in and help and, and bring cases of water, um, our local neighbors, LSU, UL, people in our league that uh, brought tractor trailers full of supplies and our kids helping disperse them. I mean, it was, I mean, it was the hardest time in my life, but it honestly was the most rewarding yeah, as well be. um, because you saw a community and a department come together like uh, I've never seen before. Yeah, it had to be. I, I wonder about the, you, know, you, you said you coached for 26 years, right? So you got student athletes all over the country, probably sure. doing a whole bunch of things in yeah. sports, out of sports. But you, you probably heard from some of them who knew that you were down oh, no there doubt. and leading the department down there. What was, what was some of the inputs you received from people who weren't, had anything to do with McNeese State, but the Heath Royer people because you coached and influenced them over the years? It's funny you, you asked that. I mean, it was it was uh, very humbling. Um, a lot of the messages I got from former players and coaches and even other administrators that, you know, you're here for a reason. There's, there's nobody that can, that, you know, that, that, you know, can do this, that this is real, why you're there. Right. You know, at this moment right now is why you're there. And, uh, uh, it was very, very humbling. So many of the messages I got. Well, what it sounds like to me coming in as an AD pandemic, right? Oh gosh. Uh, yep. hurricanes decision to get out of a profession that you probably grew to love. Right had to decide whether you can live without it or not in For terms sure. of basketball and become an athletics director, helping people weather the storm literally in terms of hurricanes down at uh, Big Nice. It sounds like they hired the right person, and it sounds like you value what you do and feel like you are being very transformative 
for the community down there at McNeese State University. I appreciate that, Ty. It means a lot. Yeah. Um, you know, we um, there's a lot of work still to be done, but uh, it's a labor of love. I love what we're doing. I love right. where we're headed. Um, we got a long way to go, but um, but we've come a long way too. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate you joining us here on the One Question Leadership Podcast. Sure. Hey, thanks for having me. Anytime. Yes, sir. That was Heath Schroyer. He is the director of athletics at McNeese State. And of course, this is Ty Brown with one question. And keep in mind, the role of a leader is to create and maintain an environment that people want to be a part of. And as always, be better tomorrow than you are today. This episode of the One Question Leadership Podcast is produced by Spades Media Group, solving problems using creative leadership.